Tracking, how to track your food, the best tips I've got, everything that I've used with thousands of clients over the last few years, something that I think is an essential process for some time, some time period throughout your fitness career, okay? And something that can massively benefit you. So we're gonna give you some tips, gonna give you, answer some of your most frequently asked questions and basically, yeah, try and, try and go through tracking. Okay, so the first thing to know is, what app do I use? So the app that I use to track all of my food is my fitness pal. Okay, it's free. It is a little blue icon. We'll put it on the screen up somewhere here next to my head. And um, this is the best app that I've found for using it for my food. I don't buy the premium version or anything like that. It is super simple to use. And um, yeah, it's a good way of logging your food. Okay, now, when it comes to tracking foods, we have a number of different questions that we always get. People go, how do I track my food? I hate tracking my food. I freak out when I'm tracking food. Now, the first one, scanning barcodes, okay? Most of the foods that you eat have packets, okay? They have barcodes. Now, hashtag muscle food, one of my companies that I work with, but all of their portions, all of their meal prep pots have barcodes on the back. All of the foods that you eat, all of the quick stuff, like say you have a ham bagel, I guarantee that the bagel has a packet. It's probably New York Deli, it's probably Warburton's, whatever it is. You can scan the back of that, the back of the packet for that, and you could scan the back of the packet of your ham. Okay, so get my fitness pal out. Okay, you've got the icon. You can literally on any sort of any sort of meal, click the scan the barcode, and you scan the barcode. Right now, that's the easy part. Okay. And this is the comparison. One of the most frequently asked questions and one of, the, one of the most common problems that I see with most of my clients is how to track food that is home cooked meals, okay? So you're eating really healthy, you're happy with cooking, you don't mind that, you've got all your, you've got all your shit together in terms of that, but how do, you, how do you track home cooked meals, okay? So I'm gonna give you an example of a, a spaghetti bolognese, which hopefully by this point, the picture is somewhere up here. Okay, now you're looking at this and you're thinking, right, spaghetti bolognese, how do I do it? Now, that's not accurate. It's not accurate to search in my fitness pal spaghetti bolognese because I guarantee the MS ready meal one is going to be different to when you go to your grandma's house and she gives you the best portion ever, okay, which is also going to be different to going to a restaurant, which is also going to be different to you cooking at home and making sure the measures support your goals. So, how do we do this? Now, the best thing to do is all in this picture here separate the ingredients, okay? So you've got your pasta. What you should be doing is weighing that out separately before you cook it, okay? What you've got next is separate the bolognese. How much of that bolognese are you using? And separate that again into the, the beef mince. What are you using? Are you using the Sainsbury's 250 grams of lean beef mince? If that's the case, scan that packet, okay? And what you should do is scan the full quantity that you use. So if you are using a kilogram packet because you know that you are feeding you, your partner and your kids or however many people it is, so say it's for four people, you know that if you scan that full kilogram packet, then at the end, you can divide that by four to get just your portion size. Does that make sense? So say you are using two full bell peppers, you're gonna have half a pepper each person. Say you have two tins of chopped tomatoes, you're gonna have half a tin of chopped tomatoes. So what the best way to track full meals, like this meal here that we've just had popped up on the screen there, is add up all the pasta, add up all the full quantity of however much is in the big pan, okay? And then divide it by your portion size, okay? So that is the best way to track home cooked meals and be accurate for your results, okay? Now, I mentioned it slightly there, but we're gonna go into it a little bit deeper, okay? Meats, fish, chicken, all of those things, should you wear them raw or cooked? You should wear them raw. And I'm gonna get that in a second. Carbohydrates, stuff like that, dry rice or cooked rice, dry pasta or cooked pasta, you should always wear it dry in my opinion, okay? Now, all of this is for a number of different reasons, right? If you smoke chicken, if you boil chicken, if you fry chicken, if you do something with this chicken, the food shrinks, but it shrinks at different rates, and it, it shrinks at different rates depending on the way you cook it, okay? Now, I don't know what I could use as an example of this, but if you have like a chicken burger, but then you look at shredded chicken from a rotisserie chicken, it's gonna look massively different. Now, this is the way it's cooked, but 
the raw measure of that chicken could be very similar or it could be very different, okay? You don't know. So the best thing for you to do is always, going back to this one, weigh out everything raw and weigh out all ingredients separately, okay? My Fitness Pal gives you a good way of doing this because on your lunch, you can separate all the ingredients and you can do that, okay? Now, the next one, a very, very big issue as well. Adam, how do I track eating out when they don't have the calories or macros? So you go to Nando's, Nando's is the god tier of tracking macros because they are always 100%. And on my fitness pal, they have a green tick. What that green tick means, that they have decided that they are verified to be within a 10% range of being successful on those macros and calories, okay? So, with those meals, you don't have anything to worry about. Your Nando's, your Wagamama's, your stuff like that. But what you do have to worry about is your restaurants where you probably like to eat, okay? These things that aren't quite as established and they're not gonna be on my fitness pal. So, I'm gonna think of a meal here quickly. I'm gonna say, let's take breakfast for example, right? You go to a breakfast and you order Eggs Benedict. Now, how is the best way to track that meal? And I'm gonna have one of these as soon as I finish this video. So that's exactly what we're gonna use here, okay? Now you look at that meal, this is not an established chain, this is the breakfast that they've served. You should think, what have I seen in the house that is like that, that is like this meal? Warburton's do an English muffin, that looks like that. So you've got one English muffin. Now I know that the Sainsbury's home bacon, the back bacon, is probably what they're using because it looks the same, it's the same sort of portion, and they've gave me three rashers. So I'm gonna remember and I'm gonna search for Sainsbury's back bacon and I'll use three of their rashers. Eggs, you know they've used two eggs, okay? Just use any Sainsbury's, Tesco, whatever, supermarket, I'm being a little bit biased towards Sainsbury's, use their eggs. Then Hollandaise, so see what you are doing here. So you are splitting up the measures, you are splitting up the ingredients in these restaurants by the naked eye, okay? And I guarantee you doing that will be even though it won't be 100% accurate, it'll still be way more accurate than you typing in Eggs Benedict. Because I guarantee that Denny's in America have a much bigger portion, okay? You have places in London where it's quirky and edgy in a different vegan cafe. That could be smaller. It's probably not gonna be as satisfying. You've got Weatherspoons where the breakfast will be massive. You've got all of these different places. So what is best to do, okay? It is best to separate the ingredients and think about the things that you have in your cupboard and relate it to them. And this goes the same, right? Say you go for a Thai restaurant and you look at, you look at they've give you a pad Thai curry or whatever it is, a Thai green curry, and you know that you've had one of them from m &S before and they gave you this bowl of rice. Now you know if that portion size looks the same as the Uncle Ben's packet of plain white rice, if it looks the same size, you can use that from home. So you can use that barcode or you can already have it on your phone and just search for it and you're gonna be similar and you're gonna be on track for your goals. So that is how to track meals when eating out when they aren't a big chain, when they don't have the macros or calories, okay? Super simple. And it'll still, even by you just writing something on that MyFitnessPal, it's gonna keep you on track in your mind. The other thing, okay? This is just a little bonus here. Mystery extras, okay? Coffees, okay? One of the major things that I see some of my clients wondering why they're not getting results, it's because they're not tracking their coffees, their cooking oils, their sauces, okay? You can easily, and this is my worst one, do 200 calories per day of mayonnaise, okay? Because that is me, okay? Cooking oils. My dad is an absolute nightmare with this. I'm gonna use, his, use him as his example. He cooks the most healthy, low calorie, high volume foods in the world. He's very good with steak, salmon, all of that, all of these nutritious, high nutrient dense foods. He's a nightmare for putting oil, for putting butter, for putting stuff like this on. And that can add up massively. So you have to, I'm not saying don't have them, but you have to consider these. You have to make sure you're doing stuff like that, okay? Now, this is a little example day <coughs> that I just wanted to run through. It is not for a calorie target. It's not what I eat in a day. So don't take this as gospel. This is just me giving you an idea of what I mean relating to these things. So, example day. I wake up in the morning, right? Four eggs, one bagel, handful of spinach, ketchup. Okay, that's what I've got on there. So, four eggs, scan the back of the packet. Bagel, scan the back of the packet. Handful of spinach. 
you can measure that on MyFitnessPal, but stuff like green veg and broccoli and stuff like that is gonna be very, very minimal on calories. One thing that I put here on purpose is to show you ketchup. Now, if I have loads and loads of ketchup, and I did have it on every meal, because I like that, this is gonna add up, okay? Your sugar and your carbohydrates from ketchup is gonna be high, okay? So one thing to consider. So tracking that, you would scan, you would scan, you would scan. But this is where the problem lies. This is one of the problems here. Meal two, burrito from restaurant, okay? I don't know, it's not on my fitness pal, okay? It's a little chain. I've had a burrito, it's a double chicken burrito with quack, with cheese, with rice, with all of this. Now what do you do, okay? You go back to the concept what I was saying of how to track when you're eating out, you separate the ingredients, okay? Search for tortilla wrap from Sainsbury's, 200 calories. Chicken breast, just guess, say it's one chicken breast, it's still gonna be more accurate than not tracking at all. 250 calories, okay? Go back on. Rice, how much rice do you think? How much rice do you feel like there was in that burrito? I think there was half a packet of Uncle Ben's rice. Use that from home. Go, don't go home. Just, just search Uncle Ben's rice, use half a packet. What else did they use? They used cheese. Use 100 calories worth of cheese. Just search cheese on MyFitnessPal, use 100 calories. Bang for your buck. They use guacamole. Search on MyFitnessPal, guac. Use 100 calories of that. And then, yes, you might not be 100%, but you are definitely gonna be closer than the person who is not tracking at all. And you are gonna know for the rest of your day what you have left more than the person that's not tracking, okay? Again, you go home, your partner, your wife, your husband, whoever is watching this video, has cooked you a home-cooked chicken pesto pasta, and they don't care about fitness, okay? So what do you do? You look at the plate, you think, how much pasta do I think they've used? I reckon they've used 75 grams of dry pasta because you've tracked in the past and you know what that looks like on your plate, okay? You use that. You find the jar in the bin, you scan the back of the jar for the pesto, okay? You say they use a quarter of a jar, ask them, say how much, babe, how much, how much pesto did you use? Okay, I used half a jar, I used a full jar, crazy. Okay, so that means that you have half of a jar or you've had a quarter of a jar. Whatever they are having, half it, okay? Chicken, you know they've used a chicken breast, you've had one chicken breast. So there you go, 200 chicken breast, 75 grams of pasta, and quarter jar of pesto. And that is you being on track, and I guarantee that is close, okay? And then back, meal four, just an example, natural yogurt, honey, blueberries, whey protein, granola, all of those things you can weigh. It's really, really simple. This has a packet, this has a packet, this has a packet. Your whey protein will have a barcode on the back of the packet, and 50 grams of granola, it's easy enough to just put your bowl on the scales and weigh 50 grams of granola. Right, I've went on and I've went off on one, okay, for this video, but I hope that makes sense, okay? This is how to track your food, this is giving you some examples, and apart from that, I hope that this can make you a little bit more successful, okay? And don't track calories on Christmas Day.